How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm an avid herpetologist and we are going to be doing another Machine Germain deck profile with you guys today. Now we are going to be mixing things up a little bit. Today we're actually going to be doing my first ever deck profile on a red base Machine Germain list. Now when I first started playing Machine Germain, this would have been back around BT6, BT7. Um, I was actually playing blue base Machine Germain, as many people were, with the classic Vimon, Demi Vimon base, a couple of Kaiser Nails. Now, as the sets progressed, especially once EX2 hit and we got the new Tamer Kazu, I've been on black base pretty much since then. Now, of course, always openly acknowledge the strengths that red base has had, but I've always very much been a black base stand. But today we are going to be reversing the script a little bit, and we are going to be looking at my take on a red base Machine Germain list in the EX5 format. Now we're going to be doing this, of course, right before, in my opinion, Black Base does become very much the de facto way to be playing Machine Drummond moving forward, as once we are going to finally hit BT15 here in a couple of weeks, we're going to be getting the brand new option card, the Incredible Supreme Connection. Now, Supreme Connection is a card we're going to be wanting to be able to be playing on turn one as consistently as possible if we see it. So it's absolutely going to be something where I think Black Base probably takes over just because of how centralizingly powerful that card is. But of course, there will be a Black Base Machine Drummond deck profile once that set hits. In the meantime, before we do transition into BT15, I wanted to do one more deck profile for Machine Drummond. And before we do transfer, I wanted to get my very first ever test experience with it playing a legitimate red base for the list. So we're going to be looking at my take on the deck. We're going to be looking at a couple of the cool tech cards that Machine Dramon as a whole has received the last couple of sets that have kind of benefited red base in particular. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into the deck profile. As always, we'll be starting with our eggs. We are, of course, going to be playing four. Now, red base, generally speaking, is going to be playing pretty much the same egg every time, and that's going to be four copies of Gigimon from EX2. Very, very simple effect. When attacking, if this Digimon has Geomon, Growlmon, or Gallopmon in the name, draw a card. The whole purpose of playing red base is basically the very powerful draw engines that the deck has access to. So really, your red base is pretty much just going to be there for your four copies of Gigimon and the only rookie that I'm going to be running, which is going to be four copies of Promo Geomon. And again, a very simple card with a very basic effect. When attacking, draw a card. So ideally, what you're going to do is, of course, be playing your rookies and your raising. When you push out, you get to swing. You'll be drawing two cards automatically, and then you really don't care what happens to the rookie after that. It's pretty much just there for the draws. So it's very much a disposable base where you don't really care if you die in, uh, into security, but of course, if you happen to hit tamers and get to keep spamming draws multiple turns, that is nothing but value for you. Now, technically speaking, red base does have a secondary viable egg now in the form of BT14 Koromon, which I think is serviceable, but Gigimon is definitely going to be the more reliable card if you're choosing to go with the Geomon draw package. Now, we're going to move up into our champions. As I said, Gilmon is our only rookie, and we're actually only playing a couple of champions as well. But to start off with, we have to talk about the brand new card from the box topper in EX5, and that is going to be two copies of the new promo, Raremon. Now, Raremon is four to play, 4,000 DP, three to Digivolve, but we're not going to be Digivolving, but we're just going to be hard playing this guy. Now, he is always treated as a cyborg Digimon, which is pretty cool. He has an on-play slash win Digivolving effect to trash any card in your hand to draw two. So you could be playing Hagurumon in this slot from EX1. I have been opting for Raremon just because he has a nice generic draw where you can discard anything that you want from your hand, which is definitely helpful. He also has a when attacking inheritable by trashing one card in your hand to delete one of your opponent's level three Digimon. That is definitely a relevant effect, so do not forget that it's there. You can Evo onto your Raremons, um, but basically he is just a pretty efficient champion level Digimon being only four to play. He gives us more draw power, which again, Red Base especially wants to see a lot of. So we are going to be playing two copies of him, backed up by another three copies of Hover Espimon, very similar to my Black Base list from the last set. Hover Espimon is again five to play, 5,000 DP, two to Digivolve. On play, when Digivolving, you can reveal the top card of your opponent's security stack. If that card is a Digimon card, you'll then gain a memory. If it's not a Digimon, draw a card. And then during all turns, as long as there is a tamer in play on either side of the field, this Digimon has blocker and can't be deleted by effects. However, Espimon is fantastic. I really haven't seen too many red lists floating around that are making use of this card, and I'm not really sure why. He's honestly phenomenal in a red base list. 
Being able to hard play him for most likely four, potentially less, but giving you an extra card to replace him, and having that immunity to destruction effects is extremely relevant. If we have a memory setter in play, which we are playing two, he'll be able to come down and then ideally be completely safe until the next turn, since a lot of decks can't out him without deleting him. Basically, he's there. Uh, memory setter is going to let us Evo onto him with a cyborg, and basically, he's just going to give us a very safe way to go from our champion level up into our megas. So, being in uh, immune. So being immune to destruction effects is relevant, being a cheap blocker is relevant, however Espimon is definitely worth playing in red base, and I will be playing three copies. Next up we are still playing a single copy of a hybrid, I've opted for Mercurymon as always, just because unlike Grumblemon who is just generic, he does have that on player when digivolving effect to give something blocker, which does come up every once in a while. So one copy of Mercurymon to help us end the game. Now we're moving on into our cyborgs, and we are actually playing 18 level 5s in my list, so let's go ahead and get into those. As always, we are going to be playing our EX1 trio. We have our copy of Andromon, our copy of Metal Tyranimon, and our copy of Metal Mamemon. I've gone over these in pretty much every Machine Dramon list I have ever done. You guys know what they do. When digivolving, look at the top three, add a level six machine, trash the rest, with the inheritables for blocker, reboot, and destroy something play cost five or less. Now, as level five ace cards become more and more prevalent, that Metal Mame effect is going to pick up steam. Since most of the level five aces are going to cost five or less, Metal Mamemon will be able to pop them on attack if your opponent is unfortunate enough to leave them in play unprotected, which honestly is probably not going to happen super often, but there will also be those situations where they may Evo into an ace, assuming that the coast is clear, maybe in response to one of your Gilmon attacks, and you'll be able to blitz in a level 6 machine and pop the ace, making your blitz even cheaper than it would be normally. So, Metal Mame has definitely picked up some good utility in the new sets, and will continue to as aces become more popular. Now we're going to be talking about our supplements to these three, as we are actually, even amongst our 18 level 5s, only playing a single duplicate. Everything else we are playing single copies of, but we are doubling up on a lot of our inheritables. So we are playing another blocker inheritable in the form of Metal Greymon from EX4. The Wind Digivolving effect isn't really relevant, but it does have blocker while in play, and since hard playing our level 5s is going to be something we may have to do in a red base, having that blocker while in play can be helpful. And of course we are going to be playing... For our next jamming inherit, we've got Gigadramon here. Now, Andromon from the new structure deck is also a viable alternative, but again, since we are going to be hard playing and not necessarily digivolving super terribly often, uh, 7 to play, 7,000 DP with a jamming ability while in play is what I have opted for here, but the other Andromon is totally usable. I'm also going to be playing an extra destruction effect in the form of Megadramon from BT14. Now this Megadramon is pretty cheap to play, being only 6, a 7000 DP, 3 to digivolve, though only from a red, so we won't be digivolving him in this deck. But his when attacking inheritable is once per turn, delete an opposing Digimon with 5000 DP or less. So this supplements our Metal Mame very effectively, giving us another way to control the board state. Blitzing in our machines, we want to be popping tons of bodies, we want to be smashing tons of security. We want to make sure that our big machine plays are doing as much damage as possible. Megadramon is going to give us more options to do that. And our last pop effect is of course going to be one copy of BT9 Megadramon. Megadramon, still having that when digivolving and when attacking effect to pop tamers or cheap Digimon, it's still relevant in the new format. It will always probably be relevant. It's very unlikely this card is going to be taken out of lists anytime soon. Some lists are running one, some lists are running two. I'm currently running one again just because we are playing a vast, diverse suit of different cyborgs. So one copy of Megadramon there. Now the only double that we are playing, you can probably guess, is going to be two copies of BT-8 Metal Greymon. This Metal Greymon, as usual, has that when digivolving effect to digivolve and pop something, and the irreplaceable inheritable to attack unsuspended Digimon as long as your top card is a level 6 machine or a Dragonkin. Metal Greymon's inheritable is, again, irreplaceable. It's never going to go below two copies in machine lists. It's just too strong for what it is. It is still one of the best inheritables in the game, and we're playing two copies. 
Now we're going to talk about some DP buffs. I'm actually going back and we are going to be playing a copy of Gigadramon from BT6 and a copy of Megadramon from BT6. Now this duo has been out of my list for quite some time, but the way that I've kind of slanted my red base, I wanted to bring these guys back in because I do think that they are helpful, especially since we're not going to be building and raising and relying a little bit less on our Chaos Dramons. So Having the ability to gain DP buffs on the opponent's turn is going to be helpful, especially when our primary game plan is going to be Machine Dramon. But having that plus 2,000 DP on our own turn, of course, again, since 11,000 DP is going to be our general gameplay, having that extra buff is going to be needed. And we are going to be supplementing that, of course, with the Secret Rare Metal Greymon. Those are going to be our three DP buff effects. So the addition of, you know, Giga Dramon is going to make our level 6 machines much harder to get through on the opponent's turn, and that wall factor is going to be much more important when we are going to be hard playing a lot of our big things, making sure that our opponent has to deal with it in ways that may be less conventional. Now moving on into our security smashing effects, we are going to be playing our single copy of the new structure, Metal Greymon. Having Blocker while in play again, again, having quite a few cards now that have Blocker while in play is going to be great for red base since it'll keep a defensive line out, and of course a generic security plus one inheritable. Almost the exact same thing with our copy of Volcano Mon here. Volcano Mon again, Blocker while in play for an extra 1000 DP, being 9k while in play, however being 4 to Digivolve. We can hard play them for the same amount, um, and it still has that generic security plus one inheritable. And our last security plus one is going to be EX1 Megadramon. Megadramon being able to come down for seven, pop two of our opponent's Digimon uh, with 3000 DP or less. Now, of course, we are still playing our single copy of BT11 Metal Tyranno. Again, having that when Digivolving or on play to keep things suspended is nice for tempo swings. The all turns effect to trash security is going to be vital against certain matchups, so we are still going to be playing our single copy of that. And now for the two tech cards that I'm playing in my level 5 slots, we are playing a single copy of BT7 Metal Greymon. This Metal Greymon being 7 to play, but gaining 2 memory back, so essentially being a 5 cost as long as you have a Tamer in play. With an Inheritable, where one of your opponent's Digimon is deleted on your turn, gain a memory. Being able to hard play things super cheap and go straight into Chaos Dramon, that is obviously going to be a great thing to do since we are not able to evolve in our raising area. And our last cyborg is a single copy of the brand new Metal Greymon Ace from BT14. Metal Greymon Ace is 4 to play, 8000 DP. Has an on play or when digivolving effect to delete an opponent opposing Digimon with 6000 DP or less. There are plenty of decks that assume that they are going to be safe if they can just keep you low on memory and don't have the ability to blitz in a Machine Dramon. Being able to hard play Metal Greymon Ace for only 4 memory, getting an 8000 DP beater out of it, and being able to pop a body is incredibly efficient and super, super valuable. Once we do hit BT15, I think the stock on this card only goes up since Supreme Connection can play it for only a single memory. So look forward to me definitely playing that single copy in BT15 as well. Middle Greymon Ace has definitely performed well in the games that I've seen it. I've never really been sad to see it, but if you don't want to hard play it, remember it is still a level 5 Remember, it is still a level 5 cyborg, it can be tossed to Analog Man, it can be tossed to any of your other discard effects, and worst case scenario, it is just a generic body that you can tuck when needed. So, we are playing that, just be mindful of the overflow, if it does get removed or detached from your sources, you'll still lose those 3 memory. Alright, level 6s, we are playing 3 copies of EX1 Machine Dramon, the man himself. As I mentioned, this list is going to be leaning pretty heavily into our EX1 Machine Dramons. Um, blitzing him in is going to be the power play of choice for this list, and we want to make sure that when we're doing that, we're still doing as much damage as possible. So popping bodies, smashing security, getting reboot blocker, it's all going to be valuable. So three copies of Machine Dramon, and we are still playing four copies of Chaos Dramon from EX3. Chaos Dramon, of course, being the follow-up boss monster. Now you might be wondering, well I mentioned that Machine Dramon is going to be the central boss monster, so why 3 of him and 4 of Chaos? Simply because we are still able to evolve over some of our level 5s and do some stack plays in this list, and of course once Machine Dramon is played, assuming we're not ending the game on the spot, we are going to potentially need follow up on the next turn. So if we do play our Machine Dramon and they're able to potentially deal with it, knock down some of its sources, being able to follow it up by evoing and getting those sources back is still extremely important. 
And do remember that Chaostromon can still be blitzed in as well. It's obviously not ideal to blitz in a 12 cost Digimon, but there's going to be situations where blitzing him in is just simply the right play. It can still triple D Digivolve and do just as much damage with three of these inheritables. So just be very mindful of how you're using him. But I am still going to be playing four Chaostromon, three Machine Dramon. And the last level six is naturally still going to be our two copies of Chaostromon X Antibody. Basically just that extra layer of follow-up for the same reason we are going to be playing Chaostromon. If our sources start to get stripped, if we're not able to keep our valuable sources, having that last follow-up or even just a two-memory play where we can tuck extra security checks, whatever the case is, there are plenty of situations where being able to evolve into Chaos X, tuck those extra sources, is going to let us finish the game on the spot, so we are still playing him at two copies. Alright, moving on to our Tamers. Of course we are still playing our 4 Analog Man. You know that we're still going to be playing our 4 Analog Man. Now, with 18 Cyborgs, we can definitely churn through our deck extraordinarily fast thanks to Analog Man. We are going to have tons and tons of bodies to pitch to him. So he is still going to be the card that lets us make our big memory plays without getting punished too terribly hard. Being able to redirect to our level 6 bodies after giving our opponent lots of memory will hopefully make sure that we are not losing after those big tempo swings. And we are also going to be playing two other tamers. We're going to be playing two copies of Memory Setter Tie from the new Structure deck. This tie, as mentioned, is a setter, so you'll make sure to start your turns at three minimum. And on all turns, if an attack target is ever switched, you can suspend this tamer to draw a card and give one of your Digimon plus 2,000 DP. Now this tie is really solid in this list. Not only is he going to be obviously great for buffing our level 6 machines, especially on top of Analog Man, where we can redirect attacks easily, he also pairs really well with Hover Espimon. Hover Espimon being a very cheap blocker, that can also potentially block with a 7k to 9k body if we have our ties in play, while also drawing cards. The interaction between Ty and Hover Espy, as well as our level 6 machines, has really come in clutch for me in quite a few different games. Um, so I am currently going to be opting for two copies of him rather than, for instance, Matt, who was in my BT14 list. So that's why I'm going to be playing this tie in this particular list. He's also going to, of course, be another black source. And we are playing, as I mentioned, option cards for blitzing. So having access to black when we don't have it on our eggs is going to be important. So that's going to be my reasoning behind that. Now we're going to be getting into a few more of, of course, the red base cards, the reason that we're playing red in the first place. I've got three copies of Fireball. For two memory, you can delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 3,000 DP or less. If nothing was deleted by this effect, you'll instead draw two, where we're passing small amounts of memory in order to draw tons and tons of cards and set up our follow-up plays. Fireball is also fantastic for removing potential floodgates. So it's going to be able to get rid of things like memory blockers that could make our Machine Dramon plays a little more risky. So three copies of Fireball there. And we are going to be playing a single copy of Crimson Blaze. Crimson Blaze is like frustratingly required in the current format. If you are playing a red deck, you kind of have to play Crimson Blaze. Like it's practically mandatory. It's six memory to play, but you reduce the cost by one for each of your opponent's Digimon. It deletes all of your opponent's Digimon with 6,000 DP or less, and make sure that your opponent cannot play Digimon by effects until the end of their next turn. This card being able to shut down decks like Anubismon, decks like D Brigade, decks like Fenry, all of those kinds of things, it's like I said, it's kind of a requirement. Like, you basically need to have the answer to those decks. And while this deck can handle those strategies reasonably well, being able to board wipe for cheap amounts of memory in a format where going wide is very much going to be the norm. If they hit this in security or if you play it from your hand, it's just going to be nice to see. So I am going to be currently playing one copy, potentially upping it to two, but we'll see. And finally, wrapping up our list, we are going to be playing three copies of Attack of the Heavy Mobile Digimon up from potentially two. Attack of the Heavy Mobile Digimon being able to, of course, blitz in our Machine Dramons. This is what we've been building up to. Attack of the Heavy Mobile Digimon has really been a Machine Dramon staple since its inception. It's really the ultimate payoff for what the strategy is trying to do, which is, of course, churning through your deck and seeing lots of level fives. Blitzing in your Machine Dramon is the big power play the deck has become famous for. Now, we have plenty of abilities that are also going to hopefully help cheapen the impact and the amount of memory that we're giving our opponent. As I mentioned, aces are becoming a lot more prevalent, especially with new sets that are coming out and the ace is getting even stronger than before. So being able to swing into a stack that may have an ace inside of it, being able to pop a potential stack with something like Metal Mamemon, or simply gaining extra memory off of our BT7 Metal Greymon can make sure that we are not ever going to have to be passing the full seven memory off of our 
EX1 Machine Dramon. Ideally, we want to make sure that we are not giving our opponent a ton of memory to retaliate with, and we have lots of ways to potentially choke now. So, Machine Dramon is still very much an unsolved deck. So this is my personal take on a red list. Yours may look very different, but... Hey, in a couple of weeks, we do have BT15 coming around the corner. Machine players have a lot to be excited from from BT15, so stay tuned for that. You know I'm going to have a deck list coming for that set as well. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. As, as I mentioned, we do have another Machine Dramon list coming in a couple of weeks once we have BT15. I know all of my machine players out there are very excited for the implementation of all of our new support. Definitely be excited about that. It's a lot to look forward to. Uh, with that, I have been an avid herpetologist. I do hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you all next time.